everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is a day that I'm going to reveal this beautiful townhouse that I've been designing and renovating for the past few months. When I walked into this townhouse, everything was in their original condition. The cabinets, the kitchen, the bathrooms. The kitchen was actually closed in between the walls. There was a wall between a kitchen and dining area. There was a corner fireplace. Upstairs in the master bedroom, there was no master bathroom. It was just a small powder room. This townhouse has three bedroom upstairs. The basement was not finished. I decided to do a major renovation here. And and my client wanted everything changed so in order to do that I needed to get a permit when you live in a house the only permit that you need to get is from the city or district but when you live in a townhouse or an apartment not only you need to get a permit from city your strata need to approve whatever you're doing as well so I needed to obtain permit from two different departments so the first thing I did I started measuring this townhouse because there was no drawing available from this townhouse so we measured the townhouse and start drawing the existing floor plan then I looked at the floor plan and find out where I wanted the changes to be and kind of confirmed that with my client I also research a lot about my client lifestyle talk with her about her style and uh, incorporate that in my design when it comes to the permit I before I send a permit to the city I send a permit to strata whatever drawing that I had uh, and a structural engineer approval and all the details of the design to strata to get approval after I got the approval from strata I send the letter of approval as well as a structural engineer your drawing and my drawing to the city to get a permit when the permit get confirmed it was time to start the project changes in this townhouse and one of the biggest one was removing the walls that were closing the kitchen and they were dividing the kitchen and dining area hello everyone i hope you're having a wonderful day i'm at one of the job sites right now looking at the walls that i proposed in my floor plan to be removed however when we opened the walls we found out few things that were inside the walls including electrical work including duct work including uh, drainage and some of these items we are able to move and relocate and some were not some will have to stay and uh, that's really a challenge when it comes to the renovation because um, renovation you cannot predict however in a new construction you literally doing everything from scratch so your hands is very much open and you can do anything you want and in the renovation you always have to be smart and have plan B and plan C if need to so I'm gonna do adjustment on my floor plans and propose that as quick as possible because we don't want things to get behind I also didn't like the corner fireplace there was a corner fireplace in the living room area and I didn't like how the furniture layout was according to that corner fireplace and I really wanted that removed the basement did not have a bathroom I think we needed a bathroom there so I added one also another very big change was a master bedroom in the master bedroom there was no bathroom and I decided to add one these big changes definitely added value to this townhouse if you want to get the most out of your renovation kitchen renovation and the master bathroom renovation is one of the biggest one that can add value to your home the whole vibe of this townhouse was relaxing I wanted this townhouse to look very clean and I wasn't after too much contrast. It's a small townhouse and usually when you're working in a smaller area, the lighter colors definitely helps to make the area look much bigger and wider. So I use that toward my design. One of the first steps of designing this townhouse was creating a mood board. Mood board gets created before even we start choosing material, before we even start the project, before we start even looking at the layout. We just want to find out how the space is going to feel like when you walk into the space. 
So when I create this mood board, it helps me a lot to define my design later on in different stages and it helps me to not get lost during difficult part of the design and stay focused. As you can see in my mood board, there's a feeling of calmness, relax, and the color theme are very light and you can feel the breeze coming through from this mood board. That's a feeling that I wanted to get when I designed the townhouse. So everything that I chose, all the color theme, all the material needed to go with that mood board. You can change your mood board accordingly. You don't have to stick to one, but it is very, very helpful to stick to the one that you feel that is right. Then the space is kind of coordinate with each other. Now let me show you how the space looks like. kitchen I decided to go with the two-tone cabinets the white and also the laminate that does have the horizontal very light gray line it's almost like a wood looking but it's a laminate Today's exciting day guys because they're bringing the countertop and the backsplashes for this kitchen which is awesome. I chose the same backsplash as the countertop for more seamless and cohesive look because I wanted to look clean and beautiful and sweet. I chose um, two different colors for the cabinet so I didn't want it to be too much and too busy with choosing a different backsplash and a different countertop so I went with all to be the same. And I think that's the right decision for this house. Anyway, I cannot wait till you see it. Oh yes, the appliances are here. This is exciting. For the countertop, I used a quartz that does have a very, very subtle pattern. And I used the same material that I used for the countertop for the backsplash. And the backsplash goes around the window and all the way to the hood fan. I uh, decided to keep the cabinet a little higher, uh, right at the hood fan height, to showcase my backsplash and also create a little bit more openness. I really want the space looks very, very open. Open. I have three beautiful pendants on top of the island and also LED lights underneath of the island and park light underneath of the cabinet and they're all on different switches so I have a full control of the lighting in the kitchen. I decided to panel the dishwasher because it was very visible and it was right when you walk in so I didn't want that really look like a dishwasher. For the sink I went with a silk granite sink and I couldn't be happier. It's a one giant big sink that you can fit anything into it and it's made of silk granite which is great because it doesn't absorb anything and it can get clean with just the little wipe. The sink is from Blanc and honestly it's an amazing thing I really suggest everyone to go and take a look at this brand it is a beautiful beautiful sink the faucet is touch faucet so if your hand is dirty you can touch the faucet with your elbow and wash your hand and that way the faucet does not get dirty as you walk into the dining area I have this beautiful pendant from Kobad 
and it's a beautiful pendant that has a lot of movement and I really really love it I went with a bigger size because sometimes you need to go big to create a statement the color of it is very soft it's not very very gold and it's not very very toward the silver it's almost like a champagne gold color it's gorgeous if you remember there was a wall at the corner of the dining area and there was plumbing inside of it and I couldn't remove that wall so I decided to create a kind of a notch inside the wall and create like a display of wine or display of dishes more like decorating purposes and I just tried to take an advantage of this space as much as I could the powder room is very small but I want it to be a little bit different I went with floated cabinet with LED light underneath so it looks beautiful it gives a vibe to that space I went with this gorgeous wallpaper on top of the wall that has very cool pattern and it's almost like branches and it's gray and silvery the sink that I use is a top mount sink with the gorgeous faucet that is very unique a round mirror and also globe light it's a beautiful light and it's almost like a moon on top of like these branches you know how you go into the forest and you see these branches at night and then you see this big moon that was the vision when you walk to the living room, the corner fireplace is gone. And honestly, it was a lot of work. Not to just remove it, to convince Strata that we are able to remove it and it is okay. You know, sometimes renovation is very difficult because you're not the only one that deciding. Like I had actually, when I was proposing, I proposed a lot of things that the strata did not like to approve like opening windows and like I wasn't allowed to touch anything from exterior so it makes things a little bit more challenging and it makes things a little bit more difficult but they finally allowed me to remove this corner fireplace and replace it with a fireplace that is now in front of the couch how great is that the fireplace now is in front of the couch and there's a TV on top of it in a right height and then I have some shelves that they're floating and we display beautiful pieces on top and that just create the mood it's a feature by itself I'm really liking this I'm really liking how the wood come through with the first coat so I'm thinking to just leave it at a first coat it's kind of giving the wood a kind of a very decent look which is pretty this color that I chose, it's called Champagne, which is a mix of gold and kind of silver. So it's giving you that soft gold, soft champagne color. It's gorgeous. The wall that was holding this series is gone and we replaced that with the glass railing and that even make the space feels much more open. As you go upstairs, there was a big closet right in the staircase area. I removed that completely to create more open space. I added a pendant. There was no pendant in the staircase area. There was a small wall sconce and we removed it. We rewire everything and added a beautiful pendant with an art on a wall and I think that definitely made that space looks much bigger here it was a closet going all the way up to the ceiling the area was too close so I opened it all up and then I added a pendant on top which is going to be stunning it's gorgeous Now as you're walking into the master bedroom, the wall in the master bedroom has been moved and I added a master bathroom and that was amazing. Super excited guys. This is a townhouse that I'm remodeling. It's a second level that you see right now in this phase and a lot of things has been done. I did a little bit of layout change, so a little bit of space planning. I added a bathroom uh, that was not existing in this floor. So this floor was had only one bathroom and I wanted the master bedroom to have a bathroom. So I added a full bathroom for this floor. It's just a very exciting moment. The master bathroom coming together quite nicely. I went with 
very uh, farm rustic sort of a tile that looks like a wood and I'm installing it like herringbone. I'm actually not even installing it, Hans is installing it. Hans is uh, one of the best tiler in Vancouver and I really enjoy working with him. Um, so he's doing the pattern that I wanted here for me. Beautiful work and I think this bathroom is going to be awesome. the tile that I chose. Beautiful. The size of the shower uh, is something that my client was super concerned about. He wanted a big shower, like bigger, I mean as big as possible because what you can do in a very small space. So I tried my best to give them the biggest shower that fits in this size. In the master bathroom, I used a floated cabinet, which is great beautiful tile for the backsplash and the mirror on top of it it just shines and the texture of the tile it comes out which is amazing for the shower i use pebble on the floor i created a bench it's a big huge shower for this size of the house for the shower tile i wanted to have a feature wall so i use this beautiful wood looking tile and i created a herringbone pattern with them uh, we grouted dark to be able to see the pattern even more. And I wanted the dark grout to be only on the back wall and everything is grouted lightly. You know, one thing that is super important when you're designing is choosing every little detail, like for example, a color of grout. For the master bedroom, I added this beautiful wallpaper that looks like concrete at the wall behind the bed. And then I added two pendants that they're white and they have a lot of movement instead of having light on top of the nightstand. I wanted the light to be on top for so the nightstand be empty and then just in case if my client want to put stuff on it, but it looks great. We also had a second bathroom. For that bathroom, I did not change any layout. What I did, it was just demolishing everything and then brand new top, brand new toilet, brand new vanity. Super excited, everything coming along quite nicely based on my mood board. As you can see, the tiles around the top has been done. The floor has been done. Still a lot to go, but I think I can see kind of my vision coming through and that is very, very exciting. And in order for that bathroom to make it look bigger, for the mirror, I went all the way to the ceiling and gorgeous, very soft, settled uh, tile for the shower and everything looks super clean. And in order to bring it out a little bit more, I used the cabinet that has more like a little bit of that rustic modern finish and the wood is light, is almost like you look like that is bleached out wood and I think it goes with the design of this house. You know how you find that uh, type of wood that is like it looks like the sun bleached them out in the beach. That's how this vanity looks like and I love it. The girl bedroom has its own vibe and it has been designed based on what my client's daughter like. She's a teenager and for the teenagers it's always a little bit trickier because it has to be trendy but at the same time I wanted to make sure that goes with the style of the house. So we went with white, gray and then we added the black. We made it look very cool and she really likes it. As you're walking to the basement, I added a media room and the media room is looking beautiful. The media room doesn't have to have window, but it has this comfortable, beautiful sofa that you can definitely lie down on it. And I created a feature wall for this media room. We did a bench, we cut a big piece of wood, we added the leg and we put it there as a base. And uh, I put a beautiful art on top and I think that looks stunning. I added a bathroom in the basement and that bathroom looks stunning guys it's it's a beautiful bathroom it's this very very tiny small bathroom and in the shower I use pebbles on a floor and I use tiles on the background that looks like water it has that blue and it has that movement it's gorgeous it's almost like watercolor and for the vanity I went just a little bit 
darker than upstairs but again that's sort of a washed out wood style for the mirror i decided to do a custom mirror that is not just a straight because the vanity was like tiny i wanted to make it look bigger so i went and created a very cool shape for the mirror so it is straight edge three corners and then one corner has that cool curve which i think it goes with the design I tiled the interior area and the kitchen area with a very beautiful, big, huge tile and it's very easy to clean. And then for the rest of the house, I use this very beautiful, almost like a bleach wood laminate throughout the entire house. I should mention is this project was on a budget and it is super important to pay attention to the budget as a designer and pay attention to all those details you want to make sure the money that your client spent on a project gets back to uh, the house and brings value to the home sometimes if you overspend the money on a house the area might not be able to afford such a renovation. So you have to be very careful with your material choices and with all the expenses that you do. And sometimes it's not very smart if you overspend in one project. Unless it's a house that your client decide to do it for themselves and they want to live there for a very, very long time or even forever, then it kind of makes sense to overspend if they really want it. But in general, on all my projects, I really pay attention to the budget and I really try to bring the most value to the home. Thank you for watching this video. I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed the design and renovation process of this townhouse. Make sure you like and subscribe for a good vibe and I'll see you in my next video.